Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be doing an Intel versus AMD video, just like the classic videos that I've uploaded years ago on this channel that did get quite a bit of popularity back in the day. So today I've got a new one. On the left side, you guys can see we have the new 13th gen, this is the i9-13900K, uh, equipped with a Z790 Aorus Master from Gigabyte, along with 64 gigabytes of G-Skill memory at 5600 uh, megahertz. On the right side, we have the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X. It could do the exact same memory kit, so it's again 64 gigabytes of G-Skill, 5600. We'll show that here in a little bit. And then for the motherboard, we are using the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. So you can see on the top, we have the boxes there. Uh, let's zoom in just to kind of show what we're going to be doing today. So today we're going to be doing a DaVinci Resolve rendering comparisons. We're going to be rendering a video in 4K, 30 hertz, because the original footage is a 30 hertz scene from Dragon Ball Z. So basically we're going to take that video, which is a, uh, I think the original footage is a 480, 480p clip, and we're going to be converting that to 2160p um, with both of these using DaVinci Resolve. So just to kind of show the specs that we're working with, um, just to show everybody there, you can see there is a 13900K with all of its cores, all all of 32 threads, and likewise on the AMD side, we have the exact same number of threads. So we have the 16 core, 32 thread, 7950X. Uh, for the graphics card, they're both running identical GPUs. So they're both equipped with the Radeon RX 6900 XT. So you can see this one right here. Uh, and then over here on the AMD side, there's the Ryzen in CPU-Z, and then there's the exact same GPU. So, same everything. You can see memory speed is at 5600 megahertz, so that's the rated speed of this RAM kit, 64 gigs. Uh, and then, likewise, on the AMD side, you can see 64 gigabytes, 5600 megahertz. So it's exactly the same. Identical GPUs, 6900XT with 16 gigabytes of VRAM in both. Uh, and what we're going to look at here is how well an air cooler can handle them. So in terms of air cooling, we are using the Noctua NHD15. Um, just to show that over here, if we take a look down there. There's the AMD system. You can see in there, that in the fractal torrent case, we have the Gigabyte Aorus Master. And there's the Sapphire 6900 XT. And likewise in the Intel system, if we were to zoom in here, now this case is different, um, but you can see it's down in there. We're using air cooling for both. So I'm gonna to try to click start at the same time, uh, but it doesn't really matter because the elapsed time is all that really matters. So we're gonna click render all, there they go. And if we zoom in, or we just kind of look at this, so there's Intel, and you can see thermal throttling is happening, yes. Thermal throttling is occurring. AMD, uh, 84C, where is it? Thermal throttling is not happening. So that is interesting. So they're both almost done, it's really close. And looks like they're both done. So, time, AMD, 36 seconds. Intel, 32 seconds. So Intel did win by four seconds in this small clip uh, comparison. But the only thing about this CPU that's a little bit concerning is if you look here, though it did win by a few seconds, it was thermal throttling. And I can only imagine that if this was a longer video, now we may do one of those in the future, but I don't want the video to be too long. But what I wanted to illustrate was that it, it's at stock settings, both of these are stock, you can't really cool the CPU properly with an air cooler, which is very unfortunate because a lot of people don't want to run custom loops or big AIOs just because they don't want to deal with water in the system. You know, there's always the... The small chance of a leak, the small chance that the pump fails, 
uh, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, the thermal throttling thing is a little concerning. 102C, you can see on the package temp, there's 102C. Uh, the power consumption as well, you can see that it pulled, for that short duration, it pulled, let me zoom in, 226 watts for the package power on the CPU. So that's the 13900K. So the power consumption is pretty insane out of the box. So it looks like they pulled out all the stops to squeeze every inch of performance just to be able to eke out a small win. But if this was a longer test, I wonder how well the CPU would hold up if you're rendering like an hour plus long video at 4K, how well would this do? So it'd be interesting to retest it on a longer render, but this was a very, very short render, you know, just over 30 seconds for a small DBZ clip. So 32 seconds. Uh, and if we go look at the AMD side for comparison, so AMD did take a little bit longer, but the thing is, these were the temps. And again, this is stock settings on both CPUs. So you can see, so right there, the die was 82.7. So it didn't reach the 95C, which is interesting. And we're on an air cooler. I um, mean, if we go down to the power consumption, you can see CPU package power, 156 watts right here. So it used less power. Uh, Intel was 226 versus this so and it depends what you're doing because if we're running a different type of video with a lot of effects Intel can pull up to 300 watts AMD typically can pull max to like 170 and then 230 for the socket um, but that's just something to keep in mind right and then the other thing is if we check the thermal throttling thermal throttling right here no 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 so the whole time we did this and, and granted it's a short render in DaVinci Resolve, but I think it proves a point that the AMD CPU is much easier to maintain with normal conventional air cooling, and it uses less power, so that's going to translate into less heat. Now, what will be interesting is to see what happens when we try to optimize both of these CPUs with things like PBO on AMD, setting power limits like I did in a previous video, um, or if we were to use Curve Optimizer. Whereas on the Intel, I think the only real option is to not only back down the power limit and make sure that the motherboard is enforcing the power limit, but it's almost like this thing needs a, a 125 TDP power limit because I just can't seem to get control over the temps. And I'm on a Noctua NHD 15. Never before have I heard of a CPU at stock being unable to be maintained with conventional cooling. It's to me, it's almost unacceptable. So I don't know what to make of it. Uh, sound off in the comments below what you guys think, uh, w which do you think is the better solution? I personally am tending, tending to lean toward AMD just because I feel like it's more refined. I can actually maintain the temps. I have a lot more options to maintain it. With the i9, yes, it's powerful, but you know, at what cost. So anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me in this video. Hope you enjoyed this content. If you like more of these sort of comparisons between Intel and AMD CPUs, as well as GPUs, I'm doing a lot of content on the Intel Arc A770. Um, I am going to be covering uh, more of that sort of uh, content in terms of video rendering, CPU productivity workloads, and benchmarks like this. So if you like these sort of real-world comparisons and analysis, looking at how these products perform. Uh, be sure to hit that like button and if you want more of this content, feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss when either I go live uh, testing these products or from newer content videos like this in the future. So once again guys, that's gonna be it for me. I'm gonna get on out of here and once again I thank everybody for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.